We're on Lesson 6 of Chapter 5, which is Transformations. The transformations we're going to be looking at today are movements of objects or shapes across the coordinate plane. The three types of transformations we're going to look at are translations, reflections, and rotations. First, let's look at translations. If you notice with this diagram here, translations move objects to the left and right or up and down, but they don't rotate the object or they don't flip the object either. It just still stays in the same position and it keeps the same size. So let's see if we could perform a couple translations on our own. It tells us to perform each translation, then write a rule for each translation. For this one, it's telling us to move this object two to the right and three down. For these shapes, what we do is we usually focus on the points. So I notice here that there are four points to this one. We can just start at the one on the bottom right here. If we're moving this two to the right, we would go from here to here, and then we move three down, that takes us all the way down to our x-axis. So this point just got moved to here. This point, if we move two to the right, it takes us right here. Three down takes us to the x-axis again. For this point, two to the right takes us to the y-axis. Three down takes us right here at the two. And for this one, two to the right takes us here, and three down takes us here. When you have your four points, you can just draw your figure. And since my drawing isn't perfect, it won't be a perfect same shape, but it should be. And now it has been translated. Here's what it means by write a rule. When we translated two to the right and three down, what happened to the x and y values that we started with? Well, we can look at that here. For the x values, for example, when we moved it 2 to the right, negative 2 became positive 0, or just 0. Negative 5 became negative 3 for the x. Negative 3 for the x became negative 1 for the x. You notice it was going up 2 each time. So by moving it 2 to the right, the x value moves up 2. So moving things to the right moves them up the amount of spots you're moving them. How about moving down for y? What happened to the coordinate points for the y values on those? Well, let's take a look. For this one, we had positive 3. That moved all the way down to 0 for y. Positive 5 moved all the way down to 2. So moving 3 down moved our y's down 3 spots, or subtracted 3 from our y. So that would be our rule for moving things to the right 2 if we go up 2, and then down 3 for moving things down 3. Let's translate this object, which has a lot of different points. We need to move this 4 to the left and 3 down. So I'm going to go a little more quickly on this one, since it does have a lot of points. If we stop at the top right here, 4 left would be here, 3 down would be here. 4 left here, 3 down here. 4 left, 3 down. For this one, 4 left, 3 down. For this one, four to the left, three down. Now for this corner one, four to the left, three down. This one, four to the left, three down, right on that x-axis. And this one was just one over, so four to the left and three down, right on the origin there. And I believe I've gotten all the points. So what I can do is I can just put them all together. And there's my new shape translated. Obviously still not drawn perfectly, but it is translated four left and three down. So now let's look at that rule again. We uh, started with our original x and y. So what happened to our x and y values? Well, by moving four to the left, we went from positive two to negative two. We went from positive five to positive one. We went from positive four to zero. So it seems like we're subtracting four each time we move four to the left. And that's what's happening to our x values, x minus 4. Our y values, by moving 3 down, just like before when we subtracted 3 when we moved 3 down, that's what's happening to our y values here. 2 becomes negative 1, 5 becomes positive 2, so that's going to be y minus 3. Now we're going to work on reflections. As you might guess, reflections are very much like looking into a mirror. So while this f takes the same space over on the left side of this mirror, or the axis, it's going to kind of look backwards. Each part corresponds to its opposite part on the other side. The two ways we're going to reflect are going to be across the y-axis, which runs top to bottom, and the x-axis, which runs left to right. 
So it tells us to perform each reflection, then write a rule. For this first one, we're going to reflect across the x-axis. The x-axis is left to right. So if I flip this across the x, I see that this is 1 away from the x, so I'm going to keep it 1 away. This one is 4 away from the x-axis, so this needs to be 4 away on this side. And this is 1 away on the x-axis, and we keep this 1 away on that side. So if we connect our dots, which is a very poorly connecting of the dots, but still reflected, we can see what happened here. Looks like it's looking into a mirror. Well, what's the rule here? We're going to write the rule for across the x-axis. Our starting point was x and y, whatever it was. So what happened to x and y? Well, if we look at x, x is at positive 5 here, and it stays at positive 5. x is at positive 1, it stays at positive 1. x is at 0, x is at 0. So I conclude that nothing actually happens to the x. Let's see what happens to the y then. The y goes from positive 1 to negative 1. The y goes from positive 4 to negative 4. And the y goes from positive 1 to negative 1. So it looks like the y gets flipped. So by going over the x-axis, it's actually the y that we do the opposite of. So that would be the rule for reflecting across the x-axis. The x stays the same, the y becomes flipped. Now let's reflect across the y-axis, which runs up and down. So if I'm going to flip this one way over here, it's 5 away from the y-axis, so I'm also going to go 5 away from the y-axis. This one's 1 away, so this stays 1 away. And this one's right on the axis, so it actually can just stay on the axis. Now if we connect our points, there we have it. It's reflected across the y-axis. So now let's talk about the rule for this one. What happens to the x and the y? Well, if you look at the x values, the x value for this one was positive 5. Now it's negative 5. 0 stays at 0. 1 turns into negative 1. It looks like the x is always going to be the opposite, and 0 is still the opposite of 0, I guess. So if we write this, we would do the opposite of x, or the flip of x. And then y stays from 4 to 4, starts at 1, ends at 1, starts at 1, ends at 1. So therefore, y would just stay the same. So here's our rules. When we go across the y-axis, the x is flipped. When we go across the x-axis, the y is the opposite. Now we're going to work on rotations, and I would say of the three, the rotations are a little bit of the trickiest because we don't quite see this a lot. But as you notice, if we rotate clockwise, for example, as the R moves in this direction, it actually kind of turns, or rotates, you could say, so that when it's all the way down here, it should be upside down. When it's over here, it should kind of be facing sideways again, and then back to its normal spot. We can also rotate counterclockwise, backwards, and we actually could do a complete 180 rotation like we're about to do again here. So let's try all three rotations. The first rotation we want to do is a 90 degree clockwise rotation around the origin. So remember we talked about that clockwise is like going like a clock. 90 degrees is one quarter turn, meaning it's one fourth of a way around all the way. If I can show that here, Right now, we're going clockwise. We're doing one quarter of a turn, meaning only one side, I guess you could say. So here's what we originally had, top right corner. Notice it's in the top right corner now. As we do a rotation, it goes to the bottom right corner. Now look at the position. We have this part facing up, the top dot here facing up. Now the top dot's facing to the right. So let's see if we can actually plot this out. Here I notice that this is all the way on the top and two away from the axis. So if I rotate that, it's all the way on the right and two away from the middle axis. So we can plot that out here. So that would be right here. If I do the same thing for this dot right here, the lower dot, it would be two to the left of the first dot. So right here. And if we do that one more time with that last dot, because that last dot a little bit tricky, it would be one over and two down, one to the left and two down of that left dot. So one to the left and two down. And there that goes. So if we connect the dots, we just rotated this figure 90 degrees clockwise. Let's see if we can figure out a rule for this one. And this is a little bit of the trickier one here. We have X and Y to start. Okay, let's look at this one for example. We have two and five. 
what does 2 and 5 turn into? Well, 2 and 5 turns into 5 and negative 2. Interesting. Let's look at this one over here. We have 4 and 2 to start. And that turns into this one over here, 2 and negative 4. So what do you notice? 2 and 5 turns into 5 and negative 2. 4 and 2 turns into 2 and negative 4. So one thing I'm noticing here is that we have the x and the y are flipped, and then the x value over here becomes a negative value. So if we're going to write that down here, we would do y then x, and then that x value here is a negative value. So y and negative x. Now if we're going to be doing a 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation, we can kind of do that same thing. So let's focus on this dot right here. That dot is 2 above the middle and all the way on the left side. The next dot would be 2 to the right of that. So let's just do those two dots right here. So here's one dot, here's two dots. Then where's that third dot going to be? It's going to be 1 to the right of these two, then 2 up. So one to the right and two up, and we could graph our rotation. So now let's erase our work for this first one and see what we can come up with with a counterclockwise rotation. The first x and y, which was two and five, now becomes negative five, positive two. The second one, which we looked at last time was four and two that turned into negative 2, positive 4. See if you can figure out the pattern for this one now. If you need to pause it, go ahead. Well, if you notice, again, the x and the y, they switched, except this time the y value becomes the negative value, and the x remains positive. So if we're going to write this one out, x and y, the original x and y, turn into flipping the y and the x, and that y value is now the negative value. What about a 180 degree rotation? That would be a turn that is halfway around, meaning if a 90 degree rotation took us here, a 90 degree clockwise rotation took us back here, where do you think that 180 degree rotation would go? If you guessed this box, you're correct. Let's see what that 180 degrees rotation looks like. So what we're looking at here is we're going to be 2 to the left of this axis, and the next one is going to be 2 above it. So let's plot that out. So if we plot that here and here, those would be our first two dots. If we do our rotation one more time, it's going to be 2 to the left and 1 up from that top dot. So if we go back here, we would say 2 to the left and 1 up. And now we can plot our three triangle points. Now let's look at what x and y turn into here. So what happens to our original x and y? Well, remember we can go back to our 2, 5, 1, the top one at the top here. 2, 5. What does that turn into? Well, that turns into negative 2, negative 5. Okay, I think I see something already. Let's see if we can figure out the next one. 4 and 2. What does that turn into? 4 and 2 turns into negative 4, negative 2. Alright, so it looks like the x and the y do not get flipped this time, but if you notice, both the x and the y become negative. So if I'm going to show this, I'm going to go x and y, that turns into negative x and negative y.